Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the most asked question we get, RV internet. It's Izzy from Endless RV and the channel that brings you the best in RV DIYs, product reviews, RV tours, and so much more. If you're new to the channel, we invite you to subscribe below, hit the notification bell, and if you're back for another video, we thank you for joining us. So in all the forums we go on, the emails we get, we always get this question, what is your internet setup? Now we have gone through evolutions of, I guess, different providers, but the structure, the backbones has pretty much stayed the same. What we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna talk about our latest, who we're using, what service provider we're using, why we're using it, and then we're gonna give a quick outline schematic of what our system is made up of. Finally, we are gonna do an interview with Darren, who is actually the third party provider on the Big Red Network. So we're gonna keep this really simple. We've done multiple videos on our internet setup. Why is internet important on an RV? We're gonna just speak on our behalf, why it's so important to us. Number one, MJ owns her own business. She has to be connected. When we're on the road, she is in contact with her employees. She's sending out invoices, receiving invoices. It is critical. We have to have internet. The second thing is we tend, well, we actually do, we stream everything. TV, we stream it. Internet on our computers, like we just said, we stream. Also, Jason is now remote learning. So if there's ever a time when we have to be out on the road and for whatever reason he has to do an assignment for school, that is critical. We also use the internet to run all our video cameras. So when we have surveillance cameras on top of the motorhome, the ring doorbell outside of the motorhome by the door, we also have cameras on the inside of the motorhome. So when we're not on the coach, we can see if we have the dogs, what's going on. We also have temperature monitors, both inside and underneath the coach. This will let us know if temperature either inside or underneath the coach, where it's really important, reaches above or below a certain amount of degrees, preset degrees that we had set, we get an alert. You need internet for this and just a variety of other reasons. Now, with that being said, there's many ways you can get internet on your RV. Two of the most common, well, I'll say three of the most common, is gonna be park Wi-Fi. We tried this when we have our trailer, monumental fail. Reason being most campground Wi-Fi, if they're even equipped with Wi-Fi, is really slow. It's really only meant to check your email. You're not gonna be streaming TV, and if you're trying to surf the web, good luck. The next way is gonna be via satellite. Now, satellite you can get anywhere in the world. The problem is the speeds are really not that fast, and it's very, very expensive. The third and the most common way is gonna be through cellular service. Now, when you're using your phone, you're using cell towers, and data is being transmitted from your phone through these cell towers, and you're getting internet that way. Now, the internet through cellular data can come in two forms. You can use your actual phone Many of the smartphones are used as a hotspot, so it has an option, a feature that you turn it on and it becomes a mobile hotspot. The second way is if you get a dedicated modem, a dedicated hotspot, and that's the way we've chosen to go. Now we have had uh, quite a few different times uh, services that we've tried. The issue is that a lot of times these services, uh, they catch on and they kind of change their terms. So originally when we started on the Motorhome, we had AT&T, it was $34.99 a month, and it was true unlimited. No cap, no throttling. I'm quickly gonna talk about what capping and throttling is. Capping is when you hit a certain amount of data, say 15 gigs of data, you no longer can use it, or you get charged, overdue charge. Throttling is when you hit a certain amount of data, say 15 gigs, and you can still use the internet. You won't get charged extra, but you get throttled down. So it becomes almost useless, like you won't be able to stream and it really becomes frustrating. We originally started on AT&T. There's three major providers in the United States. You have AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. There's multiple offshoots off that, but all these other smaller service providers, they're all using those towers, one of those three towers. So we started on at t we got kicked off of them because they just no longer provide the service. Not that they don't provide it, it's much more expensive than what it was before. So through our research, we found uh, Darren and Darren has a third party service provider company. He is the only provider that we found on the big red network. That means it's America's best network. I'm not gonna get into names, but if you know it, it's America's best, fastest, 
nationwide network. We have been using him since about, I believe, May, and it's been pretty good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you basically what our structure is, and then we're gonna turn it over to Darren, and he's gonna explain exactly what his service provides. All right, so how our network is set up, we have a roof-mounted antenna by ProxyCast. We actually did a video on the installation. We will link it above, and we will also put the Amazon affiliate links below. Now, that external antenna, what it does, basically it just it has an antenna, it is an antenna, you put it on the roof, it pushes everything higher. That allows us to get signal going down the road, and it's also gonna improve your signal when you're stationary, because you're, you're higher, you're above everything else, so you're gonna get a better signal. The second antenna that we use, and we don't use it as much anymore, is the Wiring Dual Yagi Antenna. Now, this is the most powerful antenna we use. We mount it on the back of our motorhome on the ladder, and it really sits above, and it points toward the cellular tower that is closest. We only use that if we're in an area where cellular service is not good. And to date, knock on wood, we have been able to pull down enough data that we are able to stream. So most of the time, 85% of the time, flush mount antenna, no problem. If we get into an area where the signal is just not that good, then we go with the wiring. Now, those antennas, they are gonna run into a cellular modem, a cellular hotspot, per se. We have a custom modem. It was provided by Darren, and uh, he'll explain that further when we get to him a little later in this video. But what's important about this specific hotspot modem is that it has dual external antenna inputs. And what that's gonna allow us is gonna be able to connect the external antennas, like I just explained. They're gonna run on cable, and then you're gonna screw them in, and that's gonna allow you to run external antennas. Now, you don't have to run external antennas. It will come stock with paddle antennas, which for the most part work really well. But again, if you start getting into areas as RVers where your signal is not as good, the external antennas are gonna help. Now, just a note, if you are in an area and there's zero cellular service, you're SOL. It's not gonna work. You are at the mercy of the limitations of what your cellular service and your cell cellular service provider can provide you. Now we mount the modem right on our front overhead cabinet. It sits there perfectly. I was able to put the ProxyCast antenna run the cables right through the roof on a pre-drilled out conduit, pre-provided conduit from Numar. It goes right into the cabinet. Perfect, like I said, we explained it in the video that we linked earlier. Now, once we have that set up, essentially we have a network that's set up on our motorhome. So it will broadcast a signal, and then that signal, we are able to connect all our cameras, whatever Wi-Fi devices we have, Amazon Fire Sticks, whatever it may be, we can connect to that signal. It's no different than if you had a wireless router at home, it's gonna broadcast a signal, you put it in, your username, password, whatever the name of the network is, and you just connect. Now you're gonna be asking what speeds do you get? That's really the most important part. So we are out in Wayne, New Jersey right now. It's not a rural jungle out here. It's a, it's a little more suburban, but we just did a speed test and this is pretty accurate to what we get. So we just did a speed test using speed test the app and we got 21.7 megabytes per second down. 31.1 up. Now, that's pretty dead center on average. We've gotten a low of about seven, and we've gotten as high as 75 on the download speeds. It's all gonna depend where you are. Again, there hasn't been an area where we haven't been able to stream. You're gonna need around five megs, four to five megs to, to stream TV. And of course, the more download speed you have, the more upload speed you have is gonna allow you to not only download stream faster, but if you gotta push stuff up on YouTube like we do, you're gonna want some uh, good upload speeds. So now we're gonna turn it over to Darren. He's gonna talk about what his service provides, how much the equipment is gonna cost you, how much the monthly service is, and finally, how are you gonna be able to get connected? All right, everyone, we have uh, Darren from Wi-Fi Connect. We're gonna have a bunch of questions for you, Darren, and uh, just for the subscribers, if you could just introduce yourself, what your company is and, and what you provide. I'm Darren, I'm the owner of Wi-Fi Connect. What we do is we have a couple different companies. We provide different equipment for the RV industry. And we've been working for a couple years now on products for, I needed a good full-time internet when I was traveling and I needed something that was fully, basically wouldn't cap me or wasn't unlimited. So we've been working on a good product 
to uh, deliver to the RVers through our company. And uh, I got everything straightened out with that over the last few years. We got our software written. We got things done the right way. And uh, we're ready to roll with it, basically. We've got uh, kind of a private little club going and uh, just a you know nice little group of RVers out there. So what's really cool is that, uh, you know, Darren, he actually is an RVer. You're out on the road a lot. And when I'm texting you, talking to you, you're usually out on your bus. So this is not somebody that just does this, you know, for fun. It's his business, plus he knows it works. We've been using this, I think, since probably April or May, and it's this is the one we've gone to. We, you know, we got kicked off of AT and T. If you've watched our previous videos, this is the one we've gone to. And you're actually on what you know the big red network. So uh, just explain what the cost is going to be. You know, is there any data caps? You know, just explain that to our subscribers. The data caps there is none as far as that goes. Um, you can stream with it. You can do uh, certainly run your office with it, no problem. As far as the red network goes and the blue network, we're running right now 129 a month, no monthly contracts. If you're going to go seasonal, we don't recommend it. But if you're going to go seasonal, it's $25 a month. We don't recommend not going on and off a lot uh, from month to month. We like to see at least a good six month stretch. And then, if you, of course, if you store it for six months, you know, you're, you're idle, that's fine. The kits come in two different kits. A kit with uh, which is a Cat 4, um, which is in in layman's terms for LTE signal. There's a Cat 4 modem, there's Cat 6 modems, and now they're coming out with some Cat 12, which means it's just faster. It is still all on the 4G LTE network. 5G routers are not available yet because 5G honestly is going to take quite a while to develop out there in the community. So uh, your your 4G LTE is what you're going to see traveling around the country. For the most part, the Cat 4 kits start at 299. You can add different antennas to it if you want beyond the kit, and then the uh, the Cat 6 kits those start out at um, 499, and you can add whatever you want. Now, what we do with ours is ours are all custom made uh, for us. People say, "Well, I can buy that product online. I can buy this. I can buy that." You can, um, but it's not going to operate. Our kits are fully custom. We have proprietary patented software. And it, uh, it basically does what it needs to do out there, uh, which is legal and legit. The first one I mentioned is they kind of look like this. That's um, what I have currently. Out. Yeah, we have quite a few of these out there right now. The new ones we got manufactured just for us. Um, these are They're a little bigger. And these come in a single SIM or a dual SIM with uh, bonding or failover on blue or red networks. So basically... If you're going to do the dual SIM version, say you have a, a bigger industrial application or you're a real heavy user in the RV industry and you're running a, 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 a lot through your office and Zoom and a lot of stuff, I mean, you're really dependent on where you're going to be in a region. Those go for um, $258 a month because there's, there's two accounts in there. Um, and basically those kits are six ninety nine for the dual. That will allow you to run, and I, I could tell you this because we've, we've been testing this, we've been using them true unlimited on the big red network i don't know of anybody else out there that offers that we stream everything if you've watched our videos you know that uh and i've gotten speeds in my area where i'm at you know nine megs on average it's around 20 i've gotten up to 75 megs i'm always sending darren you know screenshots when we're out because we kind of bounce things off each other to see you know where we're at and what the speeds are and I haven't been in any area where I've actually been down. And what I like about your routers are, you know, they run. I don't really have to reset them, reboot them. They, they run. They don't really get hot. I have it mounted up in the cabin. And I also like that you have the dual uh, SMA ports for external antennas, which is huge. So I don't know if you want to explain that, what that allows you to do with those dual antenna ports. So basically what it allows you to do is you're, you're allowed to take these off. And then the ports that are on here you can uh, use roof antennas, you can use different antennas, and we're gonna have, I call them a canoe paddle, but basically they're a flat antenna, a MIMO it's called, and they're different than these, and they will bring your signal in a lot better, and we're gonna start including those in the kits come January. Same for the other versions of the routers as well. The beauty of these routers also is that it has two uh, gigabit ethernet ports on the back, um, which are both LAN ports, so you can basically hardwire anything you want if you're if your coach your bus your rv your fifth wheel whatever comes with pre-wiring of cat 5 
you can feed your whole network right from this router. It makes for a really, really nice setup. And if you have uh, TVs in there, you can, of course, this has a built-in dual band uh, Wi-Fi 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi signals. So you can attach all your devices inside the RV as well via Wi-Fi, you know, your Alexa if you have it. We've tried different things and they all seem to work. Uh, camera systems seem to work great off of these. You know, we're not looking to set the world on fire or anything here, but we're expanding a little bit and we just want to keep it a nice private club and high quality. We hold all the admin rights to all these routers. So nobody has access to any of these routers because of our proprietary software that's in them. We have capability and we do remote into them if needed. They are running on a VPN and which means they're safe and secure for the average internet user that's out there. So you're protected, you're not wide open to the world. Awesome, so if uh, one of the viewers out here, because I'm sure you're gonna get a, a lot of inquiries on this, if they wanna get your equipment, your service, what do they have to do? They could go to our website, which is stayconnectedinc.net, or um, they, could, they could easily call us at our um, 800 number, which is 800-380. Four seven one two. Well, if you've watched our previous videos, we had the uh, dual Yagi, which we still carry, but we couldn't use that going down the road. Uh, Darren had suggested a flush mount antenna, which we actually did a video on. We'll link it above, uh, where we flush mounted an antenna. And now going down the road, and probably seventy five percent of the time, I don't have to take that dual Yagi out. It's connected, you know, with the external antenna, and it runs great. So, is there anything else you want to add before we uh, move on? The only other thing I'd add is. This video we're doing right here is using it. We never have any problems. We stream, and as far as my office goes and running the internet and, and others that have used it, we've, we've really had no complaints. It, it does sometimes, it, there always is that congestion issue, which you will always have in the cellular data networks, and you will always have when you travel. I like to use the rule of thumb 70-30, whether if you didn't have this product or you did, you're going to experience areas in the country that are going to be congested and slower depending on the area you're in. So 70% of the time versus 30% of the time. And you'll see speeds it's as high as 70 to 80. You'll see speeds as low as one to two to five. It just depends on where you're at. And our testing average is around, usually around eight to about 30 is usually about the area you, you, you'll you'll settle in at. Just touching up on that, we went down in Pigeon Forge over the summer and I was doing a lot of testing and sending you information and early in the morning through maybe early afternoon, great speeds. You know, I wasn't, we weren't moving. Once it hit like that later afternoon, dinner time, the speeds would drop. We never lost signal. We were still able to stream, but this, you know, the speeds would drop to like eight, seven and in the morning they'd be 25. So it really does depend on the network. But we have an experience where where we can't use it at all. So it, it's been really good. I mean, obviously there's going to be areas that there's no cellular signal, and then you're you're kind of out of it, right? But there's there's no provider that's going to help at that point. It's a give and take. That's just the way. That's the nature of the beast with cellular data. So I am going to put uh, all of Darren's and Wi-Fi Connect's information below. Darren, thank you very much for joining us. We hope you uh, get a bunch of calls because it's a really great service, and I think you're doing a good thing for the RV industry. All right. Thank you very much. So thank you, Darren, for taking the time. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a connection, you use internet on your motorhome RV, put it in the comments below. Who do you use, and how do you like it? And for myself and MJ, we thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the road.